All right, so David was like, that was a 40? And I was like, yeah, man, it's really important to know. So we, I already came back with my 10 here, 10 down, 10 all the way out, cleaned it up even more, cleaned it up on the outside. Now I'm gonna pluck all this, okay? The 10 will clean it up, but you see how short this 40 is? Cause her, her ears are so hairy. So if you have a really hairy ear, that's where the 40, not, I don't, maybe one out of 150, I'll do a 40 blade in the ears. Cause it's not every dog has that much hair in there, okay? But now we've got it nice and to the skin here. It's nice and soft and it'll actually be able to breathe in there once we get done. All right, just wanna kind of be clear on uh, why we used a 40 in her case. Cause not all dogs have that much ear hair, but she has a lot of ear hair. All right. All right, so this is kind of what we took out on the ear plucking side. This is our ear cleaner pad, our hemostats. This is both ears, uh, most of the ear hair from her ears. And so you want the ear canal to be pretty cleaned out. Look at that, how awesome that looks. That way the ears can breathe. Otherwise there's just debris that's gonna sit in there. So little hair here and there is okay. But what's in the ear canal coming out, you want that pulled out, okay? So make sure they're nice and clean. And isn't that a big difference? We've already cleaned them and everything. You can see inside the hole now. That's awesome. And then uh, on the hemostats, we do a non-locking hemostat. If you've ever grabbed skin on dog ears while you're doing an ear hair pulling and locked in on those locking hemostats, I personally would be like freaking out if I were you. So if you want the non-locking hemostats, that's what I recommend. Some folks go in there, they pinch the hair, twist it, and then lock it and don't realize they actually have skin. So make sure you know how to use the hemostats that are locking and that you use them properly not to hurt an animal. Be sure to pick up your ear hair pad and your hemostats and your 40 blade with me at myfavoritegroomer.com slash shop. I appreciate y'all, thank you. Every now and then I get an email or a text message or something that, of a concern. And one of those concerns is, will the sun burn your dog, right? If, if you shave your pet down. So this here is a seven reverse. And I would say you can kind of see the skin here. Yeah, you can see the skin, right? But there's hair still there. And she's a white dog. And this is what they want every time they come in for grooming. And we've been grooming, I mean, probably five, six years now. Oh, she's never, she's never gotten sunburnt. She's never come in with sores from being burnt. And I mean, her coat looks so smooth. But she's a white schnauzer. And schnauzers are who they are. They love to dig and get into dirt and do all this and that and get into stuff. And I, I can just say they've never wanted anything longer. We tried a couple times and because of winter or whatnot, but she usually gets tangled up and huge long matted chin or not really matted, but just hanging in the water bowl. She loves to look down. So that's, that's her normal thing. And she's a wild animal when we bring her down to the table. But right now she's really good for the grooming, but she does love to look down. So I keep this kind of loose here. But the big thing is if I shave my dog, Will the sun burn my dog, okay? And I have to tell you, in my opinion, in the many years I've been grooming, I have to say the answer is no. However, let's have some common sense here. So let's really think about this, right? What's important to think about is, if you were in Texas and it's 104 degrees on a summer day and you have no shade in your backyard and you leave your dog like this, a really short summer cut, out all day, eight hours, yeah, I can't tell you that you wouldn't get a sunburn. I would get a sunburn, okay? Uh, the guys out here working in the construction field cover themselves up with t-shirts and masks and stuff, so they don't actually get a lot of sunburn. Same thing with hats. So you can get, be wise about what you're doing. But if you are having, if you have a pet like this and you're doing a shave down, no, I don't, I've never in, in 15 years have had a pet client come in and say, oh my gosh, the shave down made my dog get burnt. So um, just, just know from a, Professional in the industry, uh, it's never happened. Could it happen? Yeah, it probably could happen. Depends on the situation. But again, we're going to many years of shaving this baby down and this is really, really nice haircut and she's never burned or anything like that. And actually it's, our shampoo and stuff is so soft. So thanks for watching DD Crow with my favorite groomer on YouTube. It's a popular question. I hope this answers and helps you guys decide if you wanna do a pet shave now. We'll talk to you later.